Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer uh, of Mock Capital with a weekly check-in. Uh, so uh, this week, obviously a big week uh, for earnings market, uh, certainly has stalled out over the last couple of days as we sort of expected going into OPEX, knowing that the call, where the call walls were, knowing that CTA flows were dwindling. Uh, now this week, all the attention is going to, at least for the first part of the week and uh, at least going towards the end of the week, uh, towards earnings. And next week, of course, you're going to get a Fed meeting and that's going to take center stage. Uh, but obviously this week, the big story is earnings. And, you know, uh, the, the the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of this rally we've seen has been concentrated to the biggest stocks in the NASDAQ 100. And it really becomes clear when you start breaking it down and looking at the actual data. So when we look at the actual data, the NASDAQ 100 from the March 13th low, which was that Monday until today, um, what we see here is that if you just look really quickly and you take the point values for each of the uh, top four stocks and you just quickly add them up, um, and you know you do a little bit of rounding. What you see is that you get um, 100, uh, you get 580 points added from just the four top stocks. In total, the Nasdaq has gone up 1,139 points. Divide that by 139.48, and you get 51% uh, of the Nasdaq's gains over the last call it month or so have been driven by only four stocks. And we're not including even in this Meta, Alphabet, ISRG. Uh, for full disclosure, I happen to own Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, uh, Google, and ISRG. So um, again, that's just for full disclosure so everyone knows uh, that I happen to own these. Uh, but again, these are the stocks that have been driv driving the market higher, and it doesn't become any more evident when you look at it from this perspective. So when people talk about you know this being a a rally, it's a rally of the top eight or ten stocks in the Nasdaq 100, and we know that has spillover effects into the S and P 500 because the market cap weighting of the S and P and the Nasdaq are similar in terms of the top stocks in both of the indexes. So the fact that they're leading the way in the Nasdaq 100 also suggests that these same stocks are leading the way in the S&P 500 as well. And so it really it really brings home the uh the amount of the move that we've seen in the markets and and really the concentration to that. And so then all of a sudden, you know, how how important the earnings become? They become very important because if any one of these companies begin to slip, uh that could change the tone of earnings season and where the markets go in general. Tomorrow you're going to get Microsoft and you're going to get Alphabet. Again, I own both of those stocks. They're going to be reporting results after the close and how they do may start setting up the rest of the week in terms of how some of the other names begin to go as well. NASDAQ 100, we've had you know 14 companies in NASDAQ 100 reports so far, so not a big sample size. But to this point, uh, earnings surprises have disappointed 5.8% below. And if we look at our little calendar here, uh, quarter. This is quarter one, 2022, quarter 23, quarter three, quarter four. So here's quarter one, calendar year 2023, 5.8% so far. One of the worst earnings seasons we've had by surprises uh, going back to the first quarter of 21. Uh, when we look at the sales surprise, just a little bit better. But that's not surprising in some ways because uh, we've had some decent economic growth. When we look at the growth rates for earnings, you can see earnings down 26 point. 7% thus far on the NASDAQ 100, clearly the worst earnings season we've had from an earnings growth perspective now going back to last year. Sales growth continues to hang in there. That tells us obviously right off the top of the bat, these NASDAQ companies are seeing a lot of margin compression that they're not able to translate the sales growth into earnings growth. So we're going to have to see how this trend continues to develop. So here's your earnings estimates for the NASDAQ 100. 2023 coming down coming down coming down then we go into 2023 then we go into this year this is 2023 it swaps from the blue line to the orange line you can see those earnings estimates are still coming down for the nasdaq 100 when we swap over to the s p 500 you're going to see a very similar trend s p 500 our earnings estimates continue also to decline here you can see the s p 500 coming down Here's your blue line. This is 2023, 2023, and then it swaps over to the orange line. 2023 still coming down, down to $218 per share. When we look at S&P 500, uh, almost a quarter 
of the companies, one almost 20% of the companies have reported results. So far, earning surprises going better than expected. Here you can see earning surprises uh, for the first quarter coming in better than what we've been seeing and more recently, so not nearly as bad as the NASDAQ. Sales surprises coming in basically in line with the last couple of quarters, so no real surprise there. Um, when we look at um, earnings growth, you can see earnings growth. Here's your first quarter of 2023 down one and a half percent so better than what we saw last quarter sales growth also better than what we saw last quarter but again this talks to margin compression but it also talks to how important earnings are going to be for the rest of the earning season because you still have a huge amount of companies that need to report results and unless these companies continue to deliver uh, those earnings estimates are going to continue to decline for the nasdaq and for the s p 500 and these things matter quite a great deal you know in that lopsidedness of the um, earnings uh, of 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 how the construction of the nasdaq 100 is is one of the reasons why you've seen the nasdaq composite not make a new high while you've seen the nasdaq 100 make a new high compared to the february 2nd number but this is also one of the reasons why you're seeing the index stall out here too is because the market's also waiting to get some clarification in terms of where these earnings are going to go for the balance of the quarter. If they begin to come in and they're better than expected and you begin to see guidance coming in better than expected, then perhaps you can get some further upside. If these earnings disappoint and the guidance isn't that great, um, so that creates a whole nother issue for the market on top of many of the other things we've been focusing on. This big level of support continues to be the 12,800 level. Uh, if this level breaks, we're talking about the potential to move back down to 12,500 or so. Uh, in the NASDAQ composite, when we flop over to the S&P 500, you can see that we had a little bit of a rising wedge here. We're still looking for a downturn in the S&P 500 based on this cycle. We haven't made uh, any other highs compared to where we were as of really around the same time as the job report came out. So again, if this cycle is still in play, we're looking for a move down into the beginning of June based off of this 80-day cycle we've been seeing in the, the S&P 500. So uh, again, and also uh, remember, uh, we haven't been able to really breach above that 4,200 level, which has also been the call wall, and that still remains to be the case. So the big level of support we're watching right now continues to be around this 4050 to 4060 region on the S&P with a break, probably setting up a much sharper decline um, going into and after earnings season. When we look at a chart of Amazon, um, you know, the stock has sort of uh, hasn't really been able also to get past that February 2nd blow off top. Um, again, when we look at the chart from a technical perspective, at least, you can see what appears to be a rising wedge that's formed even with a bump and run. So Amazon on a couple of occasions now has attempted to break above this upper trend line but hasn't been able to do so. So this is an important spot for Amazon because again, this happens to be, uh, you know, uh, again, because this happens to be a, a rather bearish pattern and would actually suggest that maybe Amazon pulls back over the short term following results, perhaps back to around 100 or so, which would take it back to this lower trend line. Clearly a break of 100 would potentially set the stock up for a further decline to around $97 or so.